All right, guys, we're ready to be outside. We have distractions, environmental distractions going on. We have dogs, action pack. So Liz is going to demonstrate with Goose. The things that are changing this session are two things. Number one, we are outdoors. Number two is instead of hooking the leash to the buckle collar, we're actually going to hook it to the active uh, circle ring on the Holty. This is a big jump because now we, were, we are controlling and steering the dog from its muzzle rather than uh, the dog just wearing the Holty and the main control is coming from the buckle. There you see your circle leash. Now Liz has two leashes on Goose. Her, her black leash is hooked to the active Holty circle. Her blue leash is hooked to his buckle collar. The same corrections we gave upstairs in the controlled environment on the buckle collar, we are going to give if he tries to paw when out and about walking here. Now you're going to have to be coordinated and it's gonna take some practice because I also want you to be feeding and rewarding the dog while we're doing this. So you see how Liz threw the Holty collar over her, or the Holty leash over her shoulder. By doing that, that opened up the ability for her to be able to walk and feed the hot dogs to Goose. This session we also changed. We are using the chicken hot dogs we talked about the last session. We're using them here outdoors. They are high value. They're easy to eat. Now, even when Liz gives the correction on the buckle collar, she does not stop walking. The key to successfully acclimating a dog to a halty tool is if you keep walking, it makes it very difficult for the dog to pick up its front paws and try to get the halty off of its um, muzzle. Most of the time when the dogs try to fight the muzzle, it's when, or the halty, it's when they want to get to something. So say for example, they see a dog across the street or maybe a squirrel they were used to chasing before. That's when they will have, we call them like a little tantrum. And it's no different than like a toddler having a tantrum, right? So you don't wanna stop. You don't wanna uh, spend any more time in that state of mind. Just keep walking and go on long, long, long walks. Make sure you have a hungry, motivated dog. You can pick times where there's not much going on. You know, don't walk during the busiest time after work or something like that. The longer the walks, the better it is for the dog to accept the new training tool. Remember guys, the Holty is like a power steering tool. It's a cruise control. It takes very minimal effort to guide your dog's face. And if your dog starts lunging out towards something, all you have to do is put a little bit of pressure on your active halty uh, line and the dog's muzzle will follow along where your leash goes. No popping motions, just a nice gentle glide, which we will talk about more uh, the next segment. Right now, the purpose of this segment is going for a long walk, having both of your leashes. If the dog is muzzling or pawing at its muzzle, using your buckle collar to add a little bit of um, upward consequence on the line to deter him from wanting to do that. Liz started to wiggle the halty line a little bit, just getting the dog used to feeling a little bit of pressure on the line. And then you saw him immediately start to try to fight and um, paw it. Good, she stays calm, she says no. Notice she releases the pressure She released the pressure when he stopped lifting his feet up and he focused on walking again.
The dog just has to get comfortable having this on his muzzle. And that's all you're seeing right now. It's also a little bit of a power struggle because they don't get to lead where they want to walk. This, I call this the make or break session for the owners, because if you can stay consistent, you're gonna set your dog up for success. If you panic or you get frustrated or overwhelmed and you succumb to the dog fighting the muzzle, then the dog wins and the dog knows that it can manipulate you if it has a little fit. That's why you just wanna get really confident and comfortable don't go too far. Go in your backyard. You're, you've already done all in, in the inside of the house. So stay in your backyard. Maybe just walk out front of the house, up and down the street, just back and forth. Remember, it still has to be a long walk, but you don't have to go to the park right now where there's going to be tons of distractions and it never fails. It's just like kids. They, they have these little fits, these little tantrums, um, especially when you have like a big group or, or a lot of distractions or something that they want to get to so sometimes then you know people from the outside they're like well what's going on that's why you need to make sure that you've worked out this initial dog fighting the halty um, somewhere in a more controlled environment i love his state of mind right now Good. Liz is gonna put a little bit more like wiggling on the halty because they have to get used to that. Guiding. Perfect. We are going to practice and stay on this segment with Goose for a good three to five more sessions. Once he is walking along, not pawing, following Liz, then we will be ready to go on more of an active distraction walk with him, um, maybe at a park. And then the last step would be adding in the stroller. So we're just gonna finish this off, work, it, work this out. Sometimes you'll notice that the dog fights the halter more in the beginning and some dogs fight the halter more when they start getting tired yeah, okay. so Liz is keep walking there you go nice we'll reward a few Liz good make a stop reward a bunch Okay, now if she stops and he starts going, then we would start walking again. Good, and patience is the key. A lot of people wanna quit because they're like, my dog hates it. It's not necessarily your dog hates it. Your dog loses a lot of the control and, and they have to follow the leadership of the handler. And sometimes that's what they're fighting more than actually the tool itself. Great job, Goose.